Well, hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to do an overview of the RoboRock app, specifically as it relates to the S7. Now if you have one of these older models or even a different model than shown on the screen, uh, go ahead and click on the video in the top part of this video now, and that is a link to one that I did before, which is a overview of an older model. This one specifically is going to apply to the S7. There are some things that are the same, but for the most part, we'll be going over the settings as it relates to the S7 today. Uh, now, if you haven't already gone ahead and set up your S7, go ahead and uh, take it out of the box, put it on the dock, and go ahead and connect it to your Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz uh, network in your house uh, by clicking this plus sign up here and uh, walk through the setup found in the instructions. Uh, once it is set up, you will see it here and you'll be able to go in here. Now on yours, when you first take it out of the box, you will have nothing here. There will be a no map and you will need to go ahead and click, click clean to go ahead and do an initial cleaning. And uh, it will create, go around your house and it will create a map uh, similar to this. And yes, there are a bunch of color-coded sections in here. We'll go over how to get that here in just a minute. But uh, when it goes out for its first initial cleaning, make sure you go ahead and open up all doors and pick up all cords, shoes, clothes, anything that could get in the way of the robot vacuum and keep it from being able to create an accurate map of your house. Uh, once it is finished cleaning, uh, either before or after, uh, you can do it before if you want, uh, go into Manage Maps and make sure you click on Map Saving Beta. That's what's going to allow you to divide these rooms up. Uh, once it is finished, if that has been turned on prior, it will go ahead and try to do its best to divide up these rooms. If not, we'll have to go ahead and do it ourselves. But that's okay because it doesn't do a perfect job at dividing the rooms. There is a lot of work you will have to do to get all of this right and probably several vacuums before you get it totally right, especially with the different no-go zones. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, so let's go ahead and divide, talk about the, the dividing rooms and the naming here. So here is the icon for the map. And what you'll want to do is you want to go into Edit Rooms and uh, click OK there. And you'll have three options down here, Merge, Divide, and Name. Let's first start with um, Divide. So when you select a room to divide, you can select any room that is already set up, even if it was a big room, um, and you can select it to divide. So let's say that this is actually two rooms, but it identified it as one room, and so I want to be able to divide this. Now I can take this by the end and I can move this anywhere that I want. Let's say that I wanted to divide it this way. Uh, then I can hit the check mark. And what it will do is it will, as you see here, it has divided this into two rooms. That will allow me to name these rooms and clean these rooms separately in future cleanings. Let's say I didn't want to divide that or that's the wrong place. No worries. All I have to do is hit the merge button here and select the two rooms that I want to merge and click the OK button and it will merge them right back together. So with these two functions, you should be able to split up all the rooms in your house and also name them. Once you have selected a, a room to name, you'll choose it. Now I already have some filled out here, um, but if you don't, you can type in your own custom name. Uh, so this is in my living room here. And so it allows you to name the rooms, kind of a neat feature there. And uh, so that is the edit room function. Again, that's found right here. All right, let's go ahead and go into the settings menu real quick and go over some of the settings before we get started. You wanna make sure your settings are set right for the new S7. Uh, so when you go back into Manage Maps, of course you should have the map be uh, saving beta turned on. You have the option to choose between single level or multi-level home. Up to four floors is what you can create a map for. So if you have up to a four-story home, you'll choose multi-level. I have a single level house, so that is what I have chosen. Here on the map, you have some options to rename this. You could name this 41, 42, 43. Uh, you can go directly into the Edit Map, which is where we just were. You can delete this map or you can restore a previous version. Previous version is this one saved since May 27th. That is today's map and it was automatically saved. You can click restore and it will automatically restore the map for you. If you have multiple maps saved and you do something to mess it up, there's always the option there under Manage Maps to restore it. Robot settings. Um, these are pretty straightforward and simple. It's simply the robot name you can customize. Uh, the button lights on the buttons. 
the status indicator light on the robot. Child lock is a pretty neat feature, uh, unique to the S7. It allows you to basically lock out the buttons on top of the S7. A uh, very handy feature. The time zone that you live in, uh, do not disturb mode means it will not clean or do any scheduled cleanings and when do not disturb mode is turned on, it will also dim the lights and also make it quiet. Uh, you can choose your units, whether it's square meters or square feet. And that is it for robot settings. Carpet settings. Carpet boost is something that you're going to want to turn on if you have a mixture of hard floors and carpet in your house. Uh, what it does is basically there's a sensor under the robot vacuum that detects carpet. And if it sees the carpet, it will boost it up to maximum power if it's not already there. And when it goes back on hard floor, it will reduce it back down in power. Uh, so very handy feature there. Here is this. This is unique to the S7 right here. This is the lifting mop uh, pad that lifts up a few millimeters. And so you can choose the mode for either rise or ignore. Now, why would you want ignore? If you have no carpets or rugs in your house at all, go ahead and set it to ignore. But if you have a mixture like most people do, you wanna put it on rise. And what that'll do is when the robot vacuum detects carpet, it'll automatically lift that mopping pad up so it's not dragging it across your carpet. It's one of the unique great features about the S7. Uh, now here is an option in the menu to ignore misidentified carpet. So um, I, don't, I don't have this actually set on mine, but you can go in here and when it goes through and identifies carpet, you can select the certain carpets and tell it to ignore it. Uh, sometimes it will misidentify car carpet and it'll think that a, uh, some of the tile floor in my house is carpet when it's not really. So I can go in there and select the area and tell it to ignore that. Uh, pretty neat feature there, unique to the S7 of course. Uh, robot voice just changes the language and the volume of it. Schedules is a pretty neat feature. So if you want it to basically go out and clean at certain times of the day or the week, you can add a schedule here and you can set a start time, how often you want it to repeat, whether it's once every day, weekdays, weekends, custom. Uh, and then also you can change your clean settings, your vacuum power, your scrub intensity if it's mopping. Uh, this will only show up if you have a mop pad attached to the robot vacuum. And also the mop route, whether it's standard or deep. And we'll get more into this here in just a few minutes. You can also turn on customize. We'll get into that here in a few minutes as well. I'll show you where this menu is located. You don't have to go here to get to it. Uh, so that is the scheduling feature. If you want it to basically do a sweep and then a mop afterwards, you would create multiple schedules. Uh, pin and go is a nice feature. You can say, I want the robot vacuum to go here and it will move off of the dot and it will go here and then you can do a spot cleaning if you want or you can just send it to the trash can so you can empty it, uh, whichever you like. A remote control feature is kind of a novelty uh, item where it gives you either buttons or a joystick to control the robot vacuum around. Maybe you want it to do a spot cleaning, and when you're done, you can send it right back to the dock without having to remote control it back there. Uh, cleaning history is just that. It shows you a total history of when it cleaned, how long it took to clean, and how much room it actually cleaned. And it also shows you a map. You can see exactly where it did do the cleaning, all the different information for it. Pretty handy sometimes. Also gives you uh, the specs for the robot vacuum, how many minutes it's been running, how many total square feet, and how many cycles it's done in your house. Uh, maintenance is uh, something you should pay attention to. It'll track the use of your filter when it goes out and it's time to replace it. Not wash it, replace it. The side brush, how much life is left on it. Uh, the main brush roller underneath. And the sensors, how often they need to be cleaned. This will be the thing that comes up more often than not. Those are the cliff sensors on the bottom of the robot, by the way. Customer support, phone number and email there. And if they may ask you for the serial number information, here's where it's located. When you contact uh, customer support, they may also ask you to report logs. You would go here and click this report logs button and it will uh, basically be sent up to RoboRock so that they can analyze the logs on your robot vacuum in case you're having problems. And the good old user manual, that's what we're here for today, to skip this and go ahead and do a video tutorial. So uh, let's just breeze right on by that and go back to the main setting, the main map here that has been created. And uh, once you have done the, uh, the, the, the map edit here with the uh, edit the room and divide it up, there's a couple other options here. You have no-go zones, so I have created a few of these. Uh, this is my bed, and so I don't want the robot vacuum to go up under my bed because I have stuff under there, and I don't want it to get stuck. So I created a no-go zone here. 
Same thing for my daughter's bed here. I do not want it to go into here. And these are couches and the recliners can lift up and the robot vacuum can actually get stuck up under the couch. So I've basically said, well, I don't want it to go here. So I've created some of these no-go zones. Uh, sometimes you may want to do an invisible wall. Like let's say uh, you don't want it to go over on this side of the room at all, right? Then you can do an invisible wall. And when it comes in here, it will not vacuum over or mop over here. You can also create no mopping zones. That is very handy. This is my living room right here. And this living room is all carpet. I know that. So I can say that's a no mopping zone. No matter what, my robot vacuum will not mop over here. So if it has a mop attached, it will not go over here. This is a no mopping zone for it. So uh, no go zones, uh, visible walls, no mop zones. This is how you get to it right here from this menu. Uh, so going back into the map setting, we have, uh, like I said, we've already gone over the edit room, the no-go zone, and now we're looking at customization. So customization allows you to customize the power level. So when you go back, let's go back over here and see this option right here, these two, this button right here. This is uh, how you get another shortcut is to the customize right here. You can choose your vacuum power, and you can choose that before each cleaning, and you can choose your scrub intensity for your mop. This is basically how much water gets put out on your floor. None, um, a little, more, a lot. And then the mop route, if you want to do a deep cleaning, I choose this a lot. And what deep cleaning will do is it will do tighter zigzags in your house. So it'll go over the same area multiple times. So it's a good option with the S7, and only the S7 has this right now, uh, to allow it to mop. Now, when you do deep cleaning, it turns the vacuum off altogether. Notice that no vacuum. If I want to do a vacuum at the same time as mopping, I have to choose standard. Again, deep cleaning is a tighter zigzag, so it goes over the same area multiple times. Now, customize, that's where we were. And so you can go into, and you can see your map here and all these little icons over it. Let's talk about what those are. So let's go in here to um, my living room, which I have not set up for the customized. And that is carpet. So when I'm in there on carpet and it's vacuuming, I want full power. And I don't want any mopping because it's carpet. There you go. Now I have set the uh, intensity mode for my living room for full vacuum and no mop. This is my dining room. This is tile floor. Um, my vacuum power, when it's mopping, I don't want it, uh, I, I want my vacuum power to be not at the highest because it's not carpet. I want it to be on the balance mode when it's vacuuming. And my scrub intensity on my uh, dining room, I want it to be deep. And so it'll turn it off. The problem with that is, is you do not have a way to set vacuum power. So if you do the customized schedule here, you really need to do standard and uh, select one of these and select one of these. Uh, it's kind of a, a downside to the customize. And one reason why I don't really use it that much is because it's not really one size fits all. But if you want to, that's what customize means. You can customize the settings for the vacuum power scrub intensity uh, for each of your rooms here on the map. Uh, so we'll say no on that. Uh, so other options here on the map as we look at them, you can see the no mop zone there that I created. So you have three options for cleaning. Now you're getting ready to clean. We've gone through all the settings. Uh, you have a full, and if you uh, select clean right now, it's going to go and vacuum in your entire house. Mop it if you have a mop pad attached and set for the different rooms. Uh, room is what I use the most personally. allows you to select multiple rooms to clean. Now these will not clean in a particular order. Uh, it is up to the robot vacuum, so you're selecting three rooms and it could clean any three of these rooms in any order uh, with the room cleaning we can choose how many times we want it to clean that room one two or three times and the same thing with zone so if I want to do a zone cleaning it's gonna put this box up here and let's say my living room is really big and I only need to clean up a mess that uh, was made like say right here I don't need it I only need it to vacuum right here in front of the couches uh, I can choose uh, how many cycles up to three again on this I can also create multiple zones So if I want it to clean, you know, say also just right here between 
uh, these two rooms, I can do that. And so I can select multiple cleaning zones and the robot vacuum will leave the dock and go clean these multiple zones how many ever times you set it to do it. Uh, so those are your three cleaning options, uh, room, full, or zone. Uh, this is just the status right here telling you that it is fully charged. Uh, and we go back here to full, you can see the battery level at the top. Uh, and if it's doing a cleaning, it'll tell you how much it's cleaned and how, how long it has done the cleaning time. So that is a full overview of the RoboRock S7 app and all of the different features and some of the new unique ones to the S7 as well. I hope this video helped you out there. If you have any comments or any questions, uh, feel free to drop those down below. And if you would, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. I would appreciate it. It mean the world to me. Uh, I hope everybody has a good one out there. Take it easy. Bye-bye.